This looks like a minor change. It looks like some new shapes, some new aluminium stamps or something, but this might be one of Tesla's most important updates in the last couple of years, actually. There's been a lot of talk lately about Tesla's new battery architecture, specifically the switch to an aluminium enclosure underneath the cars, and uh, or I suppose vehicles, I should say, and a simplified structural design. There is one thing to take away from this video at the end, or you'll know halfway through, it is a very interesting question uh, about the fact that it makes it harder to swap the batteries, you know, if you crash it or something like that. And I know, on the surface, that doesn't sound, you know, like a big deal, but I think it is. It makes it very expensive to repair them. I know this sort of topic is not, on the surface, not that flashy. It's not as flashy as a new model or a really, really quick, quick, not to 100 km per hour time. But if you dig into what's actually going on, what it actually means, it tells us a lot about where Tesla is going and how far ahead they actually might be when it comes to scaling EV production. Obviously, they are very good at that sort of thing. That, they're very good at it. They're becoming very efficient with how they make things and they don't make things necessarily to be repaired. They just make things to sell quickly and very, very, very efficiently. So think of the advancements in gigacasting. Mad. They still talk about it to this day. I think in the last uh, speech Elon made on stage, he was talking about it again. So what exactly is this new tech? So according to internal leaks and supplier updates, Tesla's updated battery packs are now using a stamped aluminium housing that eliminates dozens of previous welds and brackets and other parts. Think of it as a kind of re it's replacing a whole set of things with one single solid block of aluminium. So the result is a battery enclosure that is 20 to 25% lighter or more, cheaper to produce, more thermally stable, and more structurally rigid. And because it's aluminium, obviously, it can extract the heat out of batteries and really keep them cool. So let's put that into context because it's, you obviously need the context to make sense of this. Tesla has always had, you know, they've had a, they've not just had a car company, as Elon Musk puts it, it's a manufacturing company. So Elon Musk has been banging that drum for years. And in fact, in Tesla's earnings calls, you'll hear him actually talk more about giga castings and automation and logistics than he does about design or luxury features. So this aluminium battery architecture fits right into that story. So fewer parts means it's, it's cheaper to make, lighter, faster production. Uh, you get effectively a net longer range for your car and uh, yeah, stronger structure for the car underneath for like side impacts, for example. You don't have to upgrade the battery chemistry to make an EV better sometimes, I don't think. I think sometimes I think upgrading things like this makes a big difference. How much is actually saved then? So in traditional EV battery pack manufacturing, especially with NMC or LFP chemistries, the casing itself maybe takes about eight to 10 or 11% of the total battery mass. That's before you even get to putting cooling systems or anything like that under the body. By switching to an aluminum stamped enclosure and in integrating it into the vehicle floor, uh, Tesla is likely to shave off something like 20 to 40 kilos per pack just because they changed the metal, depending on the configuration as well. Depends on the car and that sort of thing. That might not sound like a lot, but here's the thing. If you, you know, if you, that, if that gives you 10 or 15 kilometers of extra range because of the weight saving, that sort of thing, and you can squeeze in extra battery cells, that's a big deal. Across 2 million cars per year, that's the weight of an entire city, city's worth of batteries being saved for free. That is a big deal. So there are three main things here. One, aluminium stamping, just like Tesla's uh, use of the Gigapress for the Model Y, they're now doing it for the battery pack as well, which is, that was only a matter of time. Number two, structural battery design. The pack is no longer just a box of batteries. Uh, it becomes part of the actual car's chassis, even more than it did in the cell to body designs and things like that. Number three, thermal improvements. Uh, aluminium conducts heat incredibly well, better as well than uh, steel by a long way, meaning less energy is wasted managing uh, battery temperatures and just keeping a, a stable uh, a stable equilibrium uh, or as close to as you can get really. This is the same thinking that made Tesla's unboxed manufacturing strategy possible in the first place, simplifying the process at literally every step, trying to assess what is the weakest link and having a very, very good feedback loop. And this is how they'll scale to 10 million vehicles a year I reckon in the next five or 10 years. So this is where it gets interesting. BYD Blade Battery, uh, Gen 1 and Gen 2, or Gen 0, 1 and 2, I should say, 
all is all about cell to pack integration they use lfp chemistries in long flat cells which they slot directly into the vehicle floor which i think is genius it's a brilliant design there is no modular casing no wasted space or anything incredibly efficient but tesla's new design now borrows some of those principles so even though they do still use cylindrical cells the 4680s bedding those cells into a load-bearing aluminium tray which is different that is a very big deal so it's tesla's version of a blade battery or black sorry it's, it's tesla's version of blade-like integration just using a different shape and material so byd might still have the edge on cost per kilowatt hour but tesla is catching up manufacturing elegance i think i've just coined that term especially in markets as well where labor costs are quite high this will make a big difference neo on the other hand is obviously they're probably not a big fan of this are they they're all in on battery swap technology uh, which actually discourages them from doing what tesla is doing a swappable battery needs to be modular removable in some way and not part of the car's structure i guess you could work around that but it's making it harder for companies like neo that is a big trade-off and it means that neo has more flexibility but much less integration and uh, less stiffness more weight and while it's great for customers in the short term anyway it might slow them down when it comes to manufacturing efficiency and that's obviously that's kind of where tesla is like that's their, that's their number one goal i think so tesla is betting on the opposite that full integration even if it means the battery can't be swapped or you know is, is better for scaling fast and cheap what legacy automakers are still missing uh, i would say is legacy automakers like ford or volkswagen or toyota i would say they are still playing catch up when it comes to battery pack architecture in many cases their evs are still using modular based packs retaining steel casings and things like that which is incredibly heavy mounting the packs on the chassis not within it adds you know that would add cost and weight and complexity and it's probably unnecessary really in tesla's view anyway it's not overly efficient to do it like that so even hyundai which is doing great things with the egmp platform hasn't yet moved to fully structural packs yet so when tesla brings this into the mainstream uh, models anyway you know not just the cybertruck but you know the model 3 or the model y it will basically set a new industry benchmark for structural ev design and that brings a whole set of questions basically what does this mean for you the buyer if you're looking to buy a tesla in 2025 or 2026 uh, this aluminium battery pack could mean negligibly longer range, possibly a bit faster to charge uh, due to better, better thermal management so they can chuck in an extra 50 kilowatts or something, a stiffer ride and better handling, and over time, lower costs, but probably not something that you would notice if we're honest that you know not when they when they charge three thousand dollars extra to change the color from white to red i don't think they're going to give you shave fifty dollars off because of this little advancement i think they'll pocket that so it's the kind of innovation that doesn't make a flashy headline changes the game so to speak and this is how tesla's keep its margins fairly high while prices drop what about safety structural battery packs aren't just efficient they're actually quite safe enough anyway if you just get a battery pack and you bolt it to the bottom but this still makes it theoretically safer and obviously safety tests will show how much more safe i haven't seen the footage but by embedding the battery directly into the chassis tesla can effectively improve side impact protection uh, most notably anyway i think distribute crash forces more evenly through the size of the car and the, the body of the car it's a win-win it does mean repairs could become a lot more expensive quite quickly you can't just swap the battery anymore or take it down and you know change a pyro fuse or something like that when that used to happen all the time this would actually mean it's actually quite tricky to to fix them so the whole frame might need to actually be adjusted or replaced in extreme cases which obviously that's not really going to happen that will cost more than the car as soon as the car gets to two or three years old so while this is brilliant for tesla it's brilliant for manufacturing and safety it could kind of be trickier for pro post crash repairs you know it's already quite expensive as it is it's worth keeping in mind but because that sort of thing will drive up insurance prices it, it is something that directly concern us as consumers so how much aluminium is actually used this is an interesting question and we don't know exactly but an average tesla battery pack uses around 400 kilograms of cells and the casing 
for the car can be about 100 kilograms depending on the configuration so if tesla switches from steel to aluminium obviously they'll save 20 to 40 kilos per vehicle maybe something like that and uh, obviously they can't just use a lightweight steel it has to be quite it needs to be stamped it needs to be very very strong so that means it's not just necessarily uh so the weight of steel because typically they might need to use quite uh compressed aluminium and so therefore it makes it heavier up to 60 percent fewer joints and welds and a lot, a lot of parts and as much as 300 dollars per unit in material and labor as well and over 2 million cars per year that effectively means it's about 600 million dollars saved just from changing how they box their batteries so that's a very big deal and it's a, a real gain for them really that's that's just napkin math basically some of that so tesla's new aluminium battery architecture it's not flashy you won't see it on the billboards you won't see it on all the headlines it doesn't really have wings on it and it won't drive itself but it is the clearest signal yet that Tesla is still going full steam ahead on next-gen manufacturing, really trying to take things to the next level, not just for the Cybertruck either, but for the mass market uh, from everything they build here on out. Because in the EV world, the companies that win aren't the ones with the best ads. They're the ones who can make millions of cars faster and cheaper than anybody else. Uh, BYD is obviously a very good uh, example of that. What do you think? Would you trade a swappable battery for better structure or safety and performance or maybe a little bit of extra range do you care more about repairability or rigidity how important is that for you because i think for me it would be just a very big deal let me know in the comments and i'll be reading all the comments thank you very much to the youtube members the patrons on patreon thank you for watching uh, whether you're a subscriber or not a subscriber it's okay your time matters regardless and that's why i hope you think the video is interesting if you want to support the channel you can do and uh, any questions, just put in the comments below. Thank you very much for your time.